we are now standing on the grounds of a beautiful project that provides housing for 16 families who have experienced homelessness. It's adjacent to one of the Cots family shelter locations and adjacent to everything that downtown has to offer. We're standing on the grounds that 16 families and 23 children now call home. The seed has blossomed. And it gives me great pleasure to welcome Senator Peter Welch, a supporter of this project who has helped us tremendously with this process. Senator? So we'll start out with something totally irrelevant, but it, only in Vermont, sorry. As you can see, I look pretty good right now, right? I got my hair cut this morning. The person cutting my hair, wonderful person that associates in haircutting says, you're going up to be with Jonathan Farrell. <laughs> Busted. <laughs> Anything you need to know, that's where you learn, right? <laughs> oh, it is a little hot. You know, I'm so ex <laughs> it's so wonderful to be here. One of the things that is just so exciting is um, it's really two things. Number one, we know we have a housing crisis. And you know what? We got to build housing. I mean, it's not that complicated what we have to do. It's complicated to get it done. And we've got to make it easier and easier and easier. You know, all of the things that get in the way have to be streamlined so that it's possible for folks who want to create housing that so many of our families need, uh, we can build and we can do it affordably. So to be here where, in fact, uh, we've got wonderful housing downtown, across from the school, playground right there, uh, permanently affordable, um, you know what? It can be done. And here it is. It's proof it can be done. And we've got to keep it up. And the second thing that's so exciting to me about it is, you know, it takes a village to build a housing unit, right? And everybody who is here has contributed. Uh, COTS has been just such a standout resource for us. Evernorth, you're doing such a good job in so many different places. Uh, but our financing uh, people, uh, our community leaders, uh, it just is an inspiring reality to be at a location where we've got 16 permanent units and it would not have happened except for an immense amount of cooperation, coordination, effort, determination. And it's such a contrast to what ails us in D.C. where there is such a preference for uh, conflict as opposed to cooperation. So for me to be here uh, and to see the product of cooperation, of coordination, of uh, compatibility to achieve a goal that's really important for uh, all of us, and then to know that you're going to be coming by here uh, in years, and your sons or daughters are going to be coming by here in years, and there's going to be folks living here, living their lives, contributing uh, to our community and having a sense of promise and hope about the future. So thank you all very much for this extraordinary accomplishment. Thank you so much, Senator. I'm gonna keep this brief, so I'm, I'm just gonna start in 1963. <laughs> so long before COTS came along, the YWCA acquired this property and housed and sheltered women until about 2000. And that's when a seed of caring was planted in our community. As we started the permitting process for this project, we came across some of Bob Duncan's old sketches for the Cots family shelter from about 2001, which included a fern garden for stormwater runoff. A fern garden. <laughs> As we closed out one lingering 15-year-old permit on the shelter, the city wanted to know if the fern garden wasn't on site anymore, would we be restoring it? <laughs> and we had to assure them that the site would be seeing significant new stormwater systems, which are actually right underneath us as we stand here today. A literal and figurative seed had been planted all those years ago. And those now turn of the century renovations were carried out by a 10 year old contracting company known as J.A. Morris. Some of the funding that provided shelter renovations came from the Vermont Housing and Conservation Board with a fantastic provision that the property be used in perpetuity for the economically challenged. 
And as construction on this project began, part of the funding that created this has that same provision. So this family housing, just like the Cot Shelter and the YWCA before it, will continue to serve those in need long after all of us are gone. And it's the continuity that strikes me about these endeavors. In our case, we have the same architect and builder working on the site some 20 odd years after they helped create the family shelter. What's also remarkable is that I watched all of these talented teams teaching a younger generation the skills of this very specialized work. And I know the same thing happens at Evernorth and VHCB and at VHFA and at COTS. Seeds are planted, ideas and skills are fostered, and new improved patterns and results bloom. At the groundbreaking, I spoke about how many people stepped in and stepped up in very uncertain times to nurture the seed that had been planted. NEFQ, now East Rise, nurtured the seed with a generous $1 million gift. Duncan Wisniewski Architecture nourished that seed with pro bono schematic design work. The Pomerlo Foundation, the Hale Family Foundation, and other private donors stepped in to nurture that seed with another million dollars. The Cots Board of Directors unanimously nurtured the seed with 100% participation in donations, support, and the ensuing logistics. VHFA and VHCB nurtured the seed, Evernorth nurtured the seed, and J.A. Morrissey joined the project to nurture that seed. Jeff Nick and Dan Morrissey nurtured this, this project by allowing us to use a nearby lot for contractor parking, and the city nurtured this project by allowing storage on the grounds of a memorial auditorium. And those were two key pieces of completing an infill project on a really tight downtown site. Summit Properties stepped in to nurture the seed with property management, and Northfield Savings Bank stepped in to nurture that seed. Senator Welch and his team stepped in to nurture this project with an $825,000 congressionally directed investment, and his team were tremendous advocates in getting that through congressional vote and then through the ensuing HUD process to land the funding in the project. And now, here we stand with 16 beautiful apartments that follow principles of trauma-informed design. They are energy efficient too, thanks to the funding and efforts of the Burlington Electric Department. There's heat pump, heating and air conditioning, a solar array on the roof that generates 25% of the electrical needs of the building. And as for literal seeds, 90% of the plantings on the site are native plants that grow deeper roots, that help with stormwater runoff and resiliency, that combat biodiversity and combat climate change. They support beneficial pollinators and insects and host caterpillars that in turn feed songbirds. As we say at COTS, everybody deserves a home. And if all of this can happen in the world of nonprofit housing, then it can happen everywhere. Families in our COTS shelters are supported by a stellar team that includes a children's mental health, health advocate, a children's education advocate, and housing navigation. Many of them have moved, and over the years will continue to move into this incredible space. And as families settle in, their dreams and ambitions will continue to be nurtured by the amazing team at COTS. The BHA vouchers allow families to move on when they're ready to follow their dreams. And the teamwork that goes into all of this nurturing is amazing. And I stand here today grateful for the amount of dedication, skill, care, and love that has been poured into this project by each and every one of you. If I could plant a seed for the future, I plant a seed that makes projects like this easier and simpler to build. I would plant a seed for our community to embrace the notion that everybody deserves a home. And I'd ask all of us here to ponder, what are the seeds that we are planting? And what are the seeds that we are nurturing in our world? Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm very, very pleased to welcome Nancy Owens, president of Evernorth and one of our co-conspirators in the creation of livable, affordable downtowns and housing. Hi, 
Hi, everybody. So nice to be here. I'm uh, president of Evernorth, again, as the co-owner and co-developer of Main Street Family Housing with COTS. And uh, particularly, thank you so much, Senator Welsh, for being here today. And we appreciate not only the funds that came to this project through the congressionally directed sp spending, but also your steadfast advocacy on housing in so many ways and supporting us over these last few years. I think about the ARPA funding and other things that you and your team are doing for us in DC. So thank you so much. Um, we're you know, thrilled to be here at the ribbon cutting. Um, Cods and Evernorth have worked together before. We, we worked together on the main office and shelter on North Avenue, as well as new housing in Winooski on Canal Street to provide really all the homes needed in this community. You know, we should be doing a lot more work together. So hopefully we'll be doing some more. Um, We've been able to build these homes and many others with the support of our investors in the Housing New England Fund. So one of Evernorth's jobs is that we raise capital from local and regional banks to invest in affordable housing across New England. We've raised over $300 million in the Housing New England Funds just in the past four years, and we're grateful to our investors like Northfield Savings Bank, who is a longtime Evernorth investor and a lender on this particular project. Other uh, critical financing came from public resources, which are managed by our state housing agencies, the Vermont Housing Finance Agency and BHCB, as well as the city of Burlington, Burlington Electric Department, and, um, and others. And some of those folks we're going to hear from in a few minutes. Also want to echo Jonathan's remarks about the Burlington Housing Authority, you know, committing those uh, 16 project-based vouchers to this property really assures the deep affordability um, for these homes for the people that are living here. And remarkable and unusual for this um, development is the capital fundraising by COTS, which includes that funding from East Rise, the Hale Family Foundation, and the Palmer Lowe Foundation, among others. So, you know, some, uh, some people really move through the world with relative ease, while others struggle to manage the basic needs of life, through food, shelter, work, relationships. And why this happens is a story shaped by a lot of things, right? Our culture, our social systems, luck and good fortune. And what is really evident to me is that um, we've constructed a system which really does not value all people equally. And some people may disagree and say, you know, equality, that's the basis for our American democracy. But in practice, I can walk around this community and I know that if all people were valued, well, then we would act on the inequities that we see right before our eyes every single day. But we wouldn't tolerate the poverty, the hunger, the lack of health care, the need for services, the need for housing that is so visible and so evident in our community. And I'm just so proud that this building is one small but really mighty response to the suffering that we see in our community. You know, it, it's home now to 44 people, 23 who are children. The building only has 16 apartments. The average size of the apartments is 570 square feet. Let's take a minute and think about those numbers. There's a lot of people in a small amount of space. For comparison's sake, I, I live in Burlington and have for a long time. I looked around my neighborhood block in the south end of Burlington. There's 12 single family homes on my block, one duplex and one fourplex. And knowing my neighbors, having lived there a long time, I counted them all up. There's about 41 people, easily taking up a lot more time, a lot more physical space than this little building. So we have room. Right? We have room in this community to do a lot more than we've done, and we need to do it. So, there's been a lot more talk about the housing crisis, and there's a lot of activity. There's a lot of people in the legislature and other places that are doing good work. But sometimes when change comes knocking on our door and asks us to accept our new neighbors, bigger buildings, zoning changes that will alter the look of their neighborhood, we often reply, mm, mm, well, maybe that's a little too big. Maybe that's a little too much. Can that possibly fit? 
but for all people to thrive, you and I, the people standing here, the people sitting here who have homes, we must demand better of ourselves and our state and our city government because we can house everyone. And the truth is that not building housing is a much greater harm to all of us than, than, than the harm that might come from a few more units. Not building new homes is harming our economy, it's costing us jobs, and it's furthering income inequality. Not building new homes is hurting people in our community who do not have the financial resources to afford a home. Not building new homes costs us in healthcare dollars. Not building new homes limits our supply and drives the existing prices up. And the fact is we can house everyone and we can have a beautiful city filled with all manners and types of homes and people. But if we don't change our actions, if we don't change the rules of the game, if we don't provide the capital, then we will live in a city sharply divided by wealth, a city which ultimately will be really devoid of vitality. So this property, this day, these 16 homes on this small plot of land just must be repeated until we have housed everybody. So I want to thank all the folks involved in this home, in these homes, um, the city of Burlington and the mayor, our city councilors, our state legislators, and other community leaders who advocate and legislate for affordable housing. I want to thank our entire congressional delegation who works so hard every day for Vermont. Certainly, any day that we can be here cutting ribbon is a day for celebration. And before I shift and move to the other organizations that are providing financing for these homes, I, I, um, I want to note that it's not just the financing. Um, as we talked about, it's some culture change, it's some regulatory change, and it's a whole lot of people doing this work, working together. So I want to acknowledge the Evernorth team. We are located nearby, and there are a lot of us here. Um, so maybe folks could just raise their hands so we can show our dance. Here we are. <laughs> and uh, thank you so much. And a, and a big kind thank you to Committee on Temporary Shelter and Jonathan and your team. You are such a pleasure to work with. So now uh, we're going to start with Al Flory. Al is the Executive VP and Chief Lending Officer at Northfield Savings Bank. He and I have worked together for decades and is always ready and willing to be at the table on affordable housing. So come on up, Al. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Nancy. Um, I didn't come alone here today. I just want to introduce a couple people from the bank. Uh, first is Mitchell Iacovoni. Mitch is a commercial loan officer. This is going to be his relationship for uh, Main Street Family Housing. And Tim Kane. Tim Kane is a vice president, uh, CRA, and compliance officer, and also a board member of COTS. So, welcome. <laughs> So it's, it's great to be here today to represent Northfield Savings Bank. Um, as Nancy said, we've got a longstanding relationship, not only with Nancy, but with you know other people at Evernorth, Kathy Beyer. Uh, we work with Jess Newbelt on this project. Uh, she's been a treat to, to work with. Um, we've also got a longstanding relationship with COT, so um, we're very happy to be involved with this project. We're uh, I, I was here actually for the ground breaking on that cold November day back in 2022, so it's good to be here. I haven't been through the building yet, so I'm looking forward to seeing the units. Um, but we've just been kind of sitting on the sidelines. Uh, VHFA did the construction financing. We're not coming in until the, the permanent financing, so our time is now. So we're, we're looking forward to getting that done. So again, uh, thank you for including us with the, the project. We're very happy to be involved, and uh, congratulations to everybody in, involved with this project. Thank you. Thanks, Al. Uh, next up is Megan Rauch. She's the Director of Development at the Vermont Housing Finance Agency. VHFA is the administrator of the Federal Low Income Housing Tax Credit Program, which is the primary source of financing for affordable housing in Vermont. And the tax credits from VHFA enabled the investment of over $3 million in equity through the Housing New England Fund. So Megan, come on up. Hello, everyone. 
Um, my name is Megan Roush. I'm the director of development for VHFA. Um, I was here at the groundbreaking when it was very, very cold. And if you all remember, if you were here, there was a child in the window cheering us on as we were going through it. And there were children right now cheering us on as this building. So people are excited about this building. It's not just us in this room right now. Um, so I've also had the pleasure of being close by and being able to watch the construction progress. It's, it's really exciting to see this building complete in front of us today. Um, as Nancy mentioned, the uh, VHFA was uh, really uh, was able to award federal 4% uh, housing tax credits and also construction financing to this project. The low um, income housing uh, credit program provides the largest source of affordable housing funding for the state. and um, it's actually helped to cover about 40% of the cost of this project. Um, this building is was able to be built on COT's existing property and is able to be in Burlington with a bunch of services and resources that are all, all that downtown has to offer. Um, it was a great use of an under underutilized space by COTS and Evernorth. Um, so I want to thank them for making this possible. I'd also like to shout out Alyssa Pediani from VHFA, and there's a couple others in, in the crowd from VHFA also. Um, a little short story about something that happened at VHFA recently. We, we love this project at VHFA, and we had a little competition, a gingerbread house competition, um, back in the holiday season. And the development team actually built this project. We took out the plans and specs and we built a gingerbread house that looked exactly like this. I'll have to get you a picture of it. Um, and uh, Jeannie Morrissey's on our board and she was like in awe of it. Um, it was not well constructed. It was a little shaky. Um, so I'm sure that her team did a better job with actually constructing it. Um, but, and we didn't win. That was the, that was the biggest bummer. It, uh, but I'll get you a picture and make sure that you're aware of it. Um, I'd also like to uh, thank all the partners that have worked on this project, including the city and VHCB. It really takes a whole village to make a project like this happen, and I'm just thankful to work with everyone on this project. Thanks, Megan. Thank you so much. Um, Holly Major is next up. She's the Director of Policy and Special Projects at the Vermont Housing and Conservation Board, which is our state housing trust fund. VHCB provided over $2 million in funding for the building of these new homes. And VHCB, again, like VHFA, is working all across the state in every community. Um, you'll see their work, and, and um, it's just an amazing, amazing resource that we have and lucky to have in Vermont. Thank you, Nancy. It's good to see you all, and it's especially good to see this, this building that we're all getting to celebrate today. I'm Polly Major. I'm the Director of Policy and Special Projects of the Vermont Housing and Conservation Board. And for those of you who don't know us, we are a state entity that invests in the production of affordable housing and in land conservation around the state with state and federal dollars. And we've had a long relationship with COTS and with this building and everything it provides to the community, dating back to when it was the YWCA and through the shelter and into this permanent housing phase. And when we look at projects, that's what we wanna see. We wanna see an evolution of the, of the building to serve the true need of the community. And that's really what we're seeing here, thanks to the incredible work of the leaders on this project. We're seeing it step forward to evolve from providing shelter to providing housing for the families and the children that are living here. And that is really exciting. And it's wonderful that we get to celebrate it today. I think we're thinking a lot in Vermont in the wake of the recent flooding, in the wake of our annual flooding we're seeing now, what does resiliency look like in our state? And I think we're looking at it here today. It looks like homes that are going to weather the economic ups and downs of our housing market. No matter how hot the market gets, these homes are going to be available and affordable to families who are also weathering their own difficult economic times. And that's really what's going to build strength in our community, what's going to build resilience among our population, and what's going to build a stronger Vermont. So it's exciting to see as Jonathan talked about that seed here. It's exciting to see projects like this around the state come to fruition. 
I think the last thing I'll say is that VHCB, we like to celebrate the conspiracy of goodwill. And so as so many speakers have, I just want to recognize all the conspirators on this project from the federal delegation, from Senator Welch and his support to the state legislature for their support for funding for projects like this around the state. And to all, especially to all the local partners who have supported this, said yes to this, put in the time and effort and creativity and hard work to make it happen. And to the families that, that live here and who are nurturing themselves here and building their own stability. So thank you all. Hi, I'm Lucy Gluck, and I work with COTS as a housing navigator, helping people find housing. And I'm really, really excited about this building opening up and providing a lot of housing for so many families. And uh, Burlington needs so much more of this. And uh, just glad, glad to celebrate a place where parents and kids can be together in a safe, affordable place. And that's what uh, COTS is working on. So um, glad, to, uh, glad to be here. My name is Liv Evans, and I've only been working at COTS for about two months now. And I have to say, the work that everyone does at COTS, it makes such a difference in the world, and especially in Burlington. You bring up COTS, and everybody knows what it is and what we do here. And I think this is definitely a huge achievement. Um, it's bringing a lot of families together, and it's bringing a lot of families to safety and comfort, and kids get to live normal lives and not have to worry about you know, stressful things in the world. And a lot of people have talked today about the fact that we need to make a change and that it should be a simple change, but there's a lot of work to it. And this is just showing that you can get it done. Hey, my name is Owen Williams, and um, I'm here scooping ice cream with the scoop at this um, COTS event. Um, the owner, Tim, gave me the go ahead to do a full donation. Um, I'd like to do a little bit of uh, ice cream philanthropy. Um, we work with the Boys and Girls Club as well and I thought this was a great opportunity to give some ice cream to the people here, the people living here, um, and it was a lot of fun and it made a lot of people stay. So it's good stuff. I'm Rebecca Ma. I'm the Director of Development and Communications at COTS and we are just thrilled to be able to celebrate the opening of this housing building for families who have experienced homelessness. We have 16 families currently living in this building who have gone from shelter or other precarious housing and now have a safe and stable, sustainable, deeply affordable place to call home. And we're, we're here to celebrate that and the work that COTS does to support families through the journey from homelessness to housing, from uncertainty to certainty and safety. And we're, we're happy to be able to do that with the families here with face painting and ice cream and, and it's truly a celebration. Hi, I'm Shirley Pine and I'm here at the COTS opening event for the apartments on Main Street and I'm here face painting the kids today and I'd like to add that I'm representing Face Mania. We're just so thrilled for the outcome of this project and the amazing amount of cooperation that, that uh, comes from the community and that spirit of support. It's one of the ways of work for COTS uh, that we bring the community into the work and I think today we saw that so many people were part of this project, part of making Burlington and Vermont a better place.